Hey guys, what's going on? This is Mike with Below After Blogger, and today I want to discuss a fast way I have learned over the last year to rank a new blog. Now, everybody who is getting started in blogging has a number one goal, and that's to put out more content and ultimately rank that content so we can make income. That's the whole purpose of all of this. Well, as many of you know, and I know, and have learned over the, the course of all this, that getting things to rank fast is not an easy process. And there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of people selling you tools that will shoot you to the top. And the reality is most of those things are just affiliate offers. And these people are getting paid to pump them your way. And for the most part, they're most likely not going to just rank a new site because you use a certain tool. Um, if that was the case, everybody would just buy the tool and everybody would be fighting for number one all the time. What I've found over the last year, I built four websites, and in those four websites, two are performing very well, and they're new, and the two oldest ones, which in theory should be the aged the most and doing the best, are actually doing the worst. One completely failed, and the other one, which is huge, I call it my main site because it has 120 pieces of content on it, um, is just struggling along. It's just, you know, it's slowly moving up, but nothing really impressive. I don't own any number one spots. Well, I own a two number one spots, but out of 120 articles, the majority are ranking beyond 30. I think my average position out of 120 pieces of content is like 27 right now. When I look at the older sites and I try to figure out what went wrong, there's a consistent theme and it falls on me. This isn't new information that you know I'm going to be sharing that's earth shattering. It's a reinforcement of what maybe you have been hearing in some places and that does contradict what other people are saying. So. In my sites that aren't working, I have found that those sites had a majority of content related to best of, top five, listicles, top 10, best X for Y. And it's not a website dedicated to helping consumers figure out information. And I think we've learned over the last couple of years that Google is in a position where they want to rank content that is original, helpful, and answers a consumer's problem. All right, and on my two newer websites, those are majority, and I'd say around 90, 95% response posts. All of those response posts came from Google suggested questions. So for example, you Google a seed word, best ballpoint pin, you scroll down 25% of the way of the page of the SERPs, and Google injects these four or five little suggested questions around that seed keyword. So for example, I search best, or I search ballpoint pin, all right, the word ballpoint pen as a seed keyword has a search volume estimation um, somewhere between 18,000 and 60,000, depending on which tool you're using. Now, I take that seed keyword, I Google it, I scroll down 25% of the way of the page, and I get four suggested questions. What does ballpoint pen mean? What is the smoothest ballpoint pen? Which best ball pen? And which is better ballpoint or gel pen? So let's look a little bit deeper here and say, I'm going to say gel pen refills. Search estimation of 1900, go down 25% of the way of the page, and it says, all right, and so I get a suggested question of how do you fix a gel pen that skips? I don't even know what that skips means, but you pull up the SERPs for that, you get an estimated search volume of zero, you pull it up, and I do see some response posts here. But I see one response post, a DA8 site, and when I check the words on this, 800 words. So I got a suggested question from Google, search estimation of zero, one ranking website that answered the response post question with 860 words and it's got a domain authority of eight. Beyond that SERP, there's nothing but a couple listings for ink refills and some forum posts where people discuss this problem. So this would be on my hit list to write. It's at 867 words, I'd probably just do over a thousand on this and it would be in my, it'd be in my list of articles to write because even if I don't beat out the number one spot, you could use the income school method and double the content, 1600 words, um, and maybe take the number one spot. And if you didn't, let's say you just don't do well with this article, you're still likely going to rank in the number two spot for it and get some traffic from it. So where am I going with all this? 
that's just an example of how I find response posts, how I get Google suggested questions. But let me show you the data associated with it on mine and show you what the search estimations, what the search estimations were and what results I got six months later. And in some cases, not even six months, more like four or five months. All right, so article number one, when I put it into Google, it was a suggested Google question. And when I put it in, it gives a search volume estimation of zero. I wrote the article six months ago. I wrote 1,608 words. And the month of April, which is not over yet, we're at the 28th right now, it received 3,163 page views, all organic. Article number two, search estimation volume of zero. Uh, month of April, I wrote, excuse me, I wrote 1,249 words five months ago. And it is, for the month of April, received 2,557 page views. In article number three, zero search volume estimation, I wrote 686 words. I took this number one spot snippet and I received 1,308 page views for the month of April. Now, is 1,300 page views enormous? No. Is 3,000 page views for one article in a month good? Absolutely. Is 2,000, 2,500 good? Absolutely. But what does all that do? This is aggregate. Then we want to look at the bigger picture. We want to look at this is a, a trickle game, right? So we want to do as many of these type of posts where we have little to no competition, little to no search volume. We don't care about that. If Google is suggesting it, they want it answered and they will rank who's answering that question so long as you're not a spammy site and you don't just fill it full of affiliate crap. Answer the question that Google is trying to get answered. Allow Google to find your content and connect it with that user who's looking for that problem to be solved and Google will pair you together. Um, my two newest sites are written almost entirely in response posts, all of which came from Google suggestions, and they're doing very well. This site is six months old, six and a half months old now, um, seven months old now, and it's doing 15,000 page views this month. It's gonna do almost $500 in revenue. Um, and it's not just the underserved niche, it's finding, because. This item that I write about has a lot of competition on bigger sites with more authority, but they're not doing any response posts. They're not doing any, I see that changing. I see the landscape changing. Response posts are picking up from bigger sites now, but overall those bigger sites are listicles, best of, here's the best, here's why it's the best. This is why you need it. affiliate crap, really. I made a, a website strictly dedicated to response posts. I have a handful of best of X for Y crap. Um, but overall, I'm just researching problems people have with this item, and I'm answering that problem. I bought a couple versions of this item so I can answer it, take my own pictures. And one other thing I will throw into to help you rank better that I'm learning is working, and it works twofold for you, is I'm taking my own images. That's not new or unique. We all know we should do that because if you're taking your own unique images, um, it will allow Google to recognize the fact that this is a unique image. It wasn't just scrapped from a free image dump and thrown onto a crappy blog. Um, you're giving them unique, unique images, unique content, helpful information, and Google's ranking it faster. And then on my images, I throw them in Adobe Spark or Canva, and I throw some text on them related to you know the query, as well as kind of a watermark of my website's domain at the bottom, just in case somebody else wants to strip it. Maybe you can reverse image those down the road and have those websites you take it throw you a backlink or give you credit on your site. So the big picture here is if you're waiting to rank and you're struggling to rank and you're writing these great articles about how to best of, here's why this is great, that's good content, but shift towards answering people's problems, helping people solve problems with your own unique method, your own unique images, and use the suggested questions from Google and ignore search volume estimate estimations because as I just showed you, three articles with zero search volume combined gave me over 7,000 page views in one month um, from three articles. So there's a plus side to doing Google suggested questions. Just check that question, search that question, click it, get the SERPs for it, and make sure the only thing ranking might be a product for sale or some forum posts from Reddit, Quora, things like that. Generally, the forums and Reddit posts, if those are the top results, you're going to beat them. Again, this is not earth-shattering news. But I think we get so caught up on making affiliate commissions, or at least I did in the beginning, that I just wanted to write best of, best, best, best X for Y, and link a bunch of products and look for sales. But I'm learning this is a volume game. Getting volume numbers to your website will make sales no matter what. So write helpful content, 
selectively throw in affiliate links when and where it's appropriate and don't overdo it. And I think you'll find it works pretty well. Now, what's the downside to this, right? It's not all going to be great and wonderful. So the downside on this tactic that I have found, and I found it just this week, matter of fact, is I wrote an article six months ago that discussed, um, it got 3,600 views and I noticed I dropped one position in the SERPs. And so I went in there today and looked at, you know, who was organically ranking above me. And there's a site with a DA19 who wrote the article 60 days ago, exact same response post article. Um, they doubled the word content and they have doubled the domain authority or triple the domain authority. And they took that number one spot. I'm still number two. It still brought me in 3000 page views this month. Um, but the downside to this and the downside to being a new site in general is that a bigger site who recognizes you're a new kid on the block, making some waves in the SERPs and you're taking their number one spots on things that they see as low hanging fruit, they can and will most likely, you know, outright you, outrank you and take that spot. However, I'm still happy with number two, number three, if I can get it, anything in the top 10 is always going to be a good article for me. And, um, so if you find yourself struggling to rank, you can't figure anything out to work for you. Go into Google suggested questions for your seed keyword, start playing with those. Those will take you to more Google suggested questions. Ignore the search volume, click that suggested question. If there is no direct competitor for it, no top ranking blog for it, it's only Reddit posts and forum posts. Make that a priority on your hit list for your articles to write it. Make sure it's a good article, throw your own unique images on there, throw your own watermark and text on there so Google can recognize that it's a unique image, not straight, stripped from the web somewhere. Put that all into a package. You can get it done in an hour, hour and a half. And you will see in a few months that most likely if you, if you research the right, chances are you will do well, you will rank well, and it will start bringing you traffic on your website. So hopefully this was helpful guys. I will talk to you later.